God, I thank you for this night, Lord. I thank you for this church. God, I thank you for the call that you place on this church, Lord. I pray that you'll just release a spirit of joy over this place, Lord. I pray that you'll just uh, release any chains, Lord, any, uh, any, any depression, any weight um, that are on people's shoulders today from uh, just the work week, Lord. I pray that people will find peace in this house, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for everything you've done and yet to do. Amen. Come on, worship with us today.
Church family. So we are still in our Forgiveness Challenge series on Wednesday nights. Uh, so this week we are in part three, which is Forgiveness Defeats the Demonic. If you're here in person, you're listening to Pastor Kenny Berger. Uh, but if you're catching us online, then I'm going to be doing the same teaching online to, to walk through the entire six-week series. Uh, this is uh, officially 50% through. Uh, so if you missed the other two videos, you can always go back on YouTube or Facebook and catch up and watch the other two. I uh, hope you enjoyed the worship tonight. That was uh, our worship team a few, a few weeks ago, but uh, we wanted to add in a little worship and for those of you at home to give you the opportunity to do that. Uh, now we're going to flow into the Forgiveness Challenge Part 3, uh, Forgiveness Defeats the Demonic. So scripturally, we know that Satan and his demons are never forgiven, uh, but they also never forgive. Uh, so it's actually forgiveness is divine. We've talked about a lot over the last few weeks, both on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights, how forgiveness is a, a key factor of the gospel, that forgiveness is actually the foundation of the gospel. So forgiveness is divine. Forgiveness is from God. Unforgiveness, uh, by contrary, is demonic. So if forgiveness is divine, unforgiveness is demonic. Unforgiveness is of the devil. So unforgiveness creates so many problems in our life, uh, in our relationships, and in our churches because it is a demonic issue. Uh, unforgiveness tears apart marriages, tears apart relationships, uh, tears apart families and friends, uh, and even church and ministry relations because the devil will use it every single time he has the opportunity. Ephesians chapter 4, 26 through 27 says this, And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. And for, and for anger gives a foothold to the devil. So what exactly does that mean, that anger gives a foothold to the devil? Well, unresolved anger, conflict, unforgiveness give opportunities to the devil to work in your life. Uh, when you have unforgiveness and bitterness, which is of the devil, which is demonic in nature, it opens doors and allows the enemy to control your thoughts, to move in uh, directions to speak things into your mind, to keep you remembering and, and uh, never letting go. And it harnesses that anger and uses it uh, for hate. It actually sends it in a different direction than what God does. Uh, so God obviously harnesses uh, our anger and our emotions at times to bring about forgiveness and bring about healing in our life where the enemy will harness those emotions, that anger, those, those things to bring about hatred, to bring about bitterness in your life. So unresolved anger, conflict, and unforgiveness give opportunities for the devil to work in your life. In the same manner, forgiving those who have hurt you, made you angry, cuts off the opportunity for the devil to work in your life. Uh, so if we don't want Satan at work in our life, then we've got to forgive. If we don't want Satan to have a foothold in our life, then we've got to allow anger to run its course and then forgive, right? We, we, it's, it's okay to be angry. It's not okay to be angry and sinful. What, what, is, what sin comes from anger? Well, actions, uh, but also even apart from actions, our feelings allowing bitterness and hatred and strife and uh, disunity and things like that to enter into our heart and cause uh, issues and conflict in our relationships is sinful, right? It's sinful. So forgiveness as the foundation for our Christianity started when God the Father, through the work of Jesus, forgave you and me. Aren't you happy about that? Aren't, aren't you excited about that? That's, a, that's the good news of the gospel. Colossians 2, 13 through 14 reads like this, And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with Him, having forgiven us all our trespasses, by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with his legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Jesus not only made a way for the Father to forgive us of our sins uh, without continued mediators through priests, with animal sacrifices as atonement is, is what happened uh, in the Old Testament, but with one final perfect sacrificial lamb. And uh, who is that? That's Jesus. Uh, and one final high priest or mediator between us and the Father. And who is that? That's Jesus. So Jesus made the way for us to be forgiven. He makes a way for us to forgive. Uh, he is the final perfect sacrifice so that we don't have to sacrifice uh, and spill blood anymore to, to reap forgiveness from the Father because Jesus did it once and for all to cover all mankind, uh, to cover every sin. 
so and to make a way for us to to be forgiven right and then jesus is our final mediator or our final high priest between us and the father so jesus sits at the right hand of the father interceding on our behalf praying for us uh, we pray in jesus name to the father because he is our mediator he is our high priest we have no need for for another high priest today jesus is it matthew six fourteen says this for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Uh, so sin has its legal demands, right? And it has debts that stand and are attached to it. Uh, but forgiveness sets aside and cancels what's leveled against you. And then Jesus nailed that to the cross, right? So that's the good news of the gospel. Uh, the hard news is this. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you, uh, which the converse is also true. If you don't forgive others their trespasses against you, your heavenly Father won't forgive your trespasses. So it's important to understand that there's a, uh, there's a congruent nature in forgiveness, that as we forgive, God forgives. And when we withhold forgiveness, God waits uh, on giving us forgiveness until we've worked through that and dealt with it and, uh, and allowed Him to do a work in us and forgiven people, and then God forgives us. So the conduit of, of living in a forgiven state is to also live in a forgiving state, right? So the conduit of living in a forgiven state, mean being forgiven by the Father, is also living in a forgiving state, which means that we forgive other people. So it's a cycle of the foundation of the gospel, the cycle of forgiveness. Uh, Matthew 18, 21 through 35 says this, Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? Right? We've talked about this passage uh, before. And uh, Peter thought he was being really generous. Yeah, in that moment, he, he was going to impress Jesus. He said, how, how often should I forgive? Should I forgive seven times? He thought seven is, is the, the number of perfection. You know, seven, seven times, you know, that's, that's enough. Uh, but Jesus replied, no, not seven times, but 70 times seven. Uh, what Jesus was saying is you, you perpetually forgive. You continually forgive. Uh, it's something in your life that you, you always do. You have to walk in a state of forgiveness. So therefore, he, he finishes, he says, Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was bought in who owed him a millions of dollars. He couldn't pay, so his master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, Please be patient with me, and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, you evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you also have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Uh, that's, that's a hard to receive scripture, isn't it? It is difficult. That's a, that's a hard one, but it's true. If, if God forgives us the way we forgive others, uh, then that cancellation of debt, uh, those orders and that legal uh, understanding that we talked about that Jesus nailed to the cross is only there by us being in reciprocity with, with God and with Jesus in forgiveness. It has to be reciprocal in our lives. Uh, and God in Scripture is, is very plain when He says uh, that if we do not forgive, He won't forgive us. And Jesus is very plain when He says that's what my Heavenly Father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Uh, it, it's key that we do that. So those who are forgiven by God but then refuse to be forgiving towards others live in a state of demonic torment. Those who have received the forgiveness of God, you know what it feels like to be forgiven. 
Uh, God has reached down from heaven and, and, and wrapped his arms around you and forgiven you of your sins. And you've received Jesus. And you know what Jesus did on the cross for you. But yet you refuse to forgive other people in your life. It's a state of demonic torment. It's a state of because you know what the right thing to do is, but you don't do it. Or you know what the right state of, of living is, but you don't, you don't live there. So refusing to forgive causes you to relive the horrible circumstances over and over in your mind without release. And that is hellish. So when you allow your hurt to turn into hate, you find yourself trapped in a prison of demonic torment. Now there's some good news to that. Freedom in Christ breaks all chains, including the chains of unforgiveness. Forgiving causes weights to be lifted and torment to cease. You hold the key in your decision, right? You may think, well, well, the other person holds the key because, you know, if they would just, for, if they would ask for forgiveness, then maybe I would forgive them. That's, that's not what scripture says. Um, th there's no uh, point that, that says they have to ask forgiveness in order for you to be forgive them so that God forgives you, right? The key is that you have to walk in forgiveness because it's affecting you. It's not affecting the other person. So you hold the key. You hold the key to make that decision. Christ gives you the authority. So once you decide to exercise that key, Christ doing what he did on the cross for you gives you the authority to cancel all the debt of the unforgiveness, of the sinfulness, of the bitterness, of the anger, right? To cancel all the debt of that. He gives you the authority. And then the Holy Spirit who lives within you once you receive Christ as your Savior gives you the power and also the character to maintain freedom. That's good news. Uh, the Holy Spirit gives you the, the power and the character to maintain your freedom. So how many of you know it takes power to initially break those chains and to walk through it? It takes character uh, to continually live in a state of forgiveness, continually live in a state of forgiving. Right? It takes character to do that, but only by the fruits of the Spirit. So being in relationship with Jesus, walking with Jesus, uh, reading your word, spending time in prayer, spending time with Him, uh, do you exercise the fruits of the Spirit, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And all those fruits of the Spirit build your character so that you can live a life of forgiveness. Amen. So this, this coming Sunday, we're going to be starting uh, a new series after Easter, uh, which is called Living an Empowered Life. Uh, and obviously that empowerment comes from the Holy Spirit. Uh, don't miss it. If you can be here in person, be here in person. If you can't, uh, make sure you watch us online. But for those of you who are tuned in tonight, you're watching from wherever you are, uh, wherever you find yourself you might be, but you're dealing with demonic torment because of unforgiveness in your life. I want to pray for you, and then uh, we'll close tonight. All right? Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to come together in this way. As, as we join together in person, Lord, we also join together online, uh, and the church is able to, to, re, to, to extend beyond barriers because of the technology that you've given us to use. Lord, I pray today for those who are watching and those who are at home, Lord, who are dealing with torment, tormented spirits because of unforgiveness, who have held on to that and relived the pain, and their thoughts are, are reliving the, the issues and the feelings and the things that happened to them. Lord, I pray today that they would feel a release in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray today, Lord, that they would uh, exercise the authority that you've given them by using the key of their decision to make, that, uh, to make forgiveness a part of their heart. Lord, so that they would forgive others, so that you can forgive them, because that's the way it works. So, Father, I pray today that if anyone watching this, this message tonight is in torment, that tonight they would make that decision and say vocally out of their mouth, Lord, I forgive blank. Lord, I make the decision tonight to forgive so-and-so for blank. And I ask, uh, Lord, that they would get specific with you so that you can indeed release them from the prison of torment that they've been in. Father, that, that you would give them the authority to trample over the demonic that has held their thoughts captive. 
And Holy Spirit, that you would give them the power and then give them the character to not only be free, but to walk in freedom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, church. I hope that uh, this helped somebody somebody tonight. And I pray that by the end of these six weeks, uh, that those who maybe have been bound in chains of torment and unforgiveness and bitterness in their heart will be set free in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a great night.